Hey everyone, here we go. Uh, this video is going to be a quick review of the first three learning targets in Unit 1. Um, we will be monitoring ways in which you can uh, calculate the rate, ways in which you can change the rate, making it faster or slower. That's pretty straightforward and then ways in which you can monitor the rate. So what are things that are changing? And these are all classic Chem 12 questions. Um, there's a variety of examples, but they all stem off of the base, uh, the same basic principles. So right off the bat, let's monitor the rate. Um, things that are changing. Um, you have reactants, you have products. Reactants will always be going down, They're decreasing in amount, and products will always be made or produced, and they will be increasing in amount. Most of the time we'll be given a balanced question, similar to the one you see in the middle of the screen. Copper solid, silver nitrate, aqueous, copper nitrate, aqueous, and silver solid. This thing has some colors underneath it. Absolute dead giveaway that you'll need to monitor color. And then you have heat uh, on the right side. So it's exothermic, producing some heat. So temperature is going up, super easy. You can monitor heat. So let's start um, with anything specific. Um, there's no real way to start these questions. You just need to memorize all the things that can change and apply it to your examples. So you can change in mass, you can change in color, you can change in concentration, you can change uh, in temperature, and you can change in volume and pressure. Um, volume and pressure are dedicated only to gases. We do not have any gas in this question, so we're not going to do volume and pressure. So the first thing that I see right off the bat is we have solids. In solids, you can monitor the mass. We have two solids, a copper solid and a silver solid, so you can monitor the mass of those things. Copper solid is a reactant, that mass is going to decrease as time goes on. Silver solid is a product, that mass is going to increase as time goes on. Next thing I notice is that we have aqueous items. Aqueous items, um, if they're changing, means you can monitor the molarity or the concentration. And the square brackets in this example is the concentration. Silver nitrate is a reactant. It will be decreasing as time goes on. Copper nitrate is a product. It will be increasing as time goes on. Some teachers or professors will prefer that you write things out in ionic form or in ions. So AgNO3 is ionic. It can be broken down into a metal and a nonmetal. Ag is a plus one, nitrate is a minus one. So instead of saying silver nitrate, you can say just Ag plus. And I'm ignoring the nitrate for now. Give me 30 seconds and I'll explain why. Copper nitrate, aqueous, molarity, product, would be increasing as time goes on, but it's ionic. You can break it down into the metal, copper plus two, and nitrate, which is a negative one. Notice how, again, I'm ignoring the nitrate. In this balanced equation, we have two nitrates on the left side and two nitrates on the right side, which means nitrate is a spectator. We've mentioned that a few times in class. You have to train your brain to see the spectators. You'll always have multiple choice questions with spectators in them to trick you into picking it. But the spectators are not going to change. They cannot monitor the rate of the reaction. So we've done massive solids. We've done concentrations of aqueous things. And the last really obvious one in this question is color. There are four colors. This is not a good test question. It's just too obvious that color is changing, but you can monitor the brown, the clear going away, and you'll monitor the, the blue forming and the silver solid forming. So anything that's a reactant will decrease. Anything that's a product will increase. Silver is a product, it's increasing, and the color of the clear will decrease. And last but not least, we got heat. It's a dead giveaway that you can monitor the change in temperature over the change in time. So writing rate equations, monitoring reaction rate, this covers almost all of them except a volume or a pressure, uh, which we'll do later in an example.
Next learning target is calculating rate. There are a few different calculating rate questions. We're going to do three in this video and these are the two low and medium level ones where you have a balanced equation you're given some data grams of copper in four hours so you can write out your rate equation which is the change in mass over change in time I have that in red you can plug in your numbers subtract them reduce it down and in red with that green circle around it 0.3325 grams per hour so that's the rate of of uh, the reaction using the copper. In my question, just trying to be a little more fancy, changing it to grams per second, so that's what I did here in blue. Grams per hour, hours on the bottom, times line, you want to get rid of hours, so you put hour on top. Uh, one hour has 3600 seconds in it, and you can go into minutes and then seconds and have two steps instead of one. It's fine, just do whatever your teacher or prof uh, is expecting I'm fine either way so cancel off the hours divide the numbers and you get 9.24 times 10 to the negative 5 grams per second nothing fancy pretty simple low-level question change in mass over change in time question number two we stepped it up just a little bit notice how the data is in copper but the question is in silver that's how subtle the hint is knowing that you need stoichiometry and a balanced mole ratio uh, a bridge to convert copper into silver. So I'm starting with grams of copper per hour in green. That's why it's circled green up there. I'm going to go to moles. I'm using the molar mass from the periodic table. I'm going through the mole ratio. There are two AGs to one copper. What you want is on top. What you're using is going to be on the bottom to cancel off. Grams of copper, then moles of copper. We now have moles of silver get rid of moles of silver by putting it on the bottom. We want grams of silver. 107.9 is on top. So that's how we convert to grams of silver. The other sneaky part in this question, it says produced in 1.5 hours. So we need to cancel off the hours and only end up in grams. So when we multiply by 1.5 hours, we're canceling off the hours and ending in a singular unit grams. We're not ending in a rate like in question number one. We're ending in just grams. So you got to slow your brain down and are you trying to end in a rate or are you trying to end with a singular unit? Okay. So these are two good examples of calculating rate and here is the third. Okay. There's a lot going on in this question. But this is an absolute guaranteed question in any Chem 12 reaction kinetics test. We have a balanced equation. We got a little diagram. Maybe it's useful. Maybe it's not. We got some data. We have minutes for the time, and then we have total mass of beaker and contents. Total mass of beaker and contents started off at 150 grams and ended at 146.3 grams. So in those eight minutes, it lost mass, and it lost mass because you are producing a gas and that gas is leaving the beaker because there's no lid on the container the gas is escaping so the mass of the system is decreasing because of the CO2 gas that is being produced you have to train your brain to look for that type of detail so in essence what this data table is is the mass of CO2 gas produced. Now you've seen this because we've done a lab on this where you came to that conclusion on your own. So this is what it looks like in a paper pencil test. So the bold question down there is not a good test question because it's giving it away that it's CO2 that's being produced. You will not have a question like this. I'm, I'm setting this up for the higher level thought process test question. So to answer that bold one down there, the rate of production of CO2 in moles per second in the first five minutes means, well, you can cut the data off at five minutes, change in mass over change in time in purple, simplify that down, you get 0.718 grams per minute. 
Now I'm asking for moles, again, completely ridiculous. You're not going to be asked for that on a test, but you're going to use that information for the real test question. So we're going to go from grams in purple there to moles. So I did in green. Then we're going to convert the minutes um, into seconds. So minutes on the bottom, put minutes on top, 60 seconds on the bottom, do your math. You get the 2.7 or the negative 4 number. So let me just stress, I'm never going to ask you to end in moles per second. What I'm trying to do in this review is set you up for the real question, which would be, given the data, given the balanced equation, what is the mass of CaCO3 used? And I'm hiding the fact that that data is CO2, or that data is any gas that's being produced. So if I'm asking for a mass of that solid, you now have to use stoichiometry because the data is in CO2 and you've got to convert it to CaCO3. So follow this blue arrow. Once you have grams per minute, you can go to moles. That's of CO2. You can convert that into moles of CO, CaCO3. So it's 1 over 1. CO2s cancel off. Go into grams. And now you get your final answer in grams per minute. That is a much, much, much better high-end test question. I'm hiding the fact that the gas is leaving by asking for mass of something else. Guaranteed test question. One final thing to review. We have monitored the rate, simply. We have calculated the rate, three different uh, examples. The last one is factors that affect the rate. And this is not a difficult question for Chem 12 students. Factors that affect the rate. Easiest one is temperature. If you increase the temp, you increase the rate for reasons that we'll dive into a lot more detail for later on in the unit. If you add more reactants, change the reactants somehow, you can increase the rate. I see an aqueous item, so I'm going to increase the concentration of HCl. Add more reactants, you get more collisions, you get a faster rate. Again, reasons we'll talk about in the next couple days. This reaction is heterogeneous. It's got a solid and an aqueous, and heterogeneous reactions are affected by surface area. If I increase the surface area, more collisions, faster rate. And lastly is add a catalyst. We have a whole learning target dedicated to catalysts, but as you know from probably grade 8, grade 7, you add a catalyst that speeds up the rate. So the last way to speed up a rate is by changing volume or pressure but that only affects gases. And we only have a gas in the products. If we had a gas in the reactants, then we could modify the pressure and the volume to increase or decrease the rate. But we cannot do that here because the gas is in the products, and you do not change the products to change the rate. So, quick review, first three learning targets.